Be that as it may, this uncommon design is really crafted by individuals who lived over quite a while back. Also, ongoing DNA examination of stays found at the site uncovers a few upsetting bits of insight about these old Irish individuals. Heen and A from this enormous Neolithic burial chamber has uncovered a few dull insights about Ireland's previous rulers. Inside, thin hallways improved with fragile Stone Age carvings lead through the old structure and end in rooms that filled in as burial places for the collections of these long-dead pioneers. This astonishing structure called New Grinch is situated in the Boyne Valley, where various antiquated burial chambers have been found throughout the long term. According to the official website of the site, New Grunge originated approximately 5,200 years ago. Even younger is the ancient Greek Parthenon, which was constructed just 2,500 years ago and stands on a hill above Athens. Truth be told, this information plainly shows the uncommon outcome of New Grit. The waterway Boyne courses through Ireland's province Meath and New Grange landmark is situated close to its banks. This area is around 40 miles north of Ireland's capital, Dublin. The authority site expresses that a sum of 97 standing stones encompass the focal construction of the new grid vault. The chamber is toward the finish of the 63-foot fundamental entry looking like a cross and has a unique 20-foot high top of stone pillars. Around 35 Stone Age carts make up the new Grange monument in the Brunel Boyne complex. Furthermore, the most renowned spot after New Grid is North Dothan. The intricacy of the design recommends a profoundly coordinated society that presumably had a distinct social construction wherein top pioneers were in control. The ranchers who fabricated the New Granges probably slipped from before individuals who lived by hunting and assembling. Because of this brand new way of life, those previous individuals had the option to build their numbers. This structures the designs that they have assembled in the Boyne Valley. The circumstance is significantly seriously amazing, as we see that these men had the option to make exact estimations of the sun's development across the sky soon. Archaeological and DNA proof shows that the general public that established current grit was exceptionally complex. The new Grinch was deserted during the Iron Age around the 3rd century BC, around 2,000 years after its creation. In this way, there might be an association between the evacuation of the burial ground bunch and the appearance of the new wave. The land in the Boyne Valley where Brenneboyne Hill is utilized for farming. In 1378, the Cistercian priests of Elephant Cloister claimed the land. The name New Waste was taken on when acknowledgement of the antiquated history of the site was lost. Because of Charles Campbell for the acquisition of the new land, be that as it may, he couldn't have cared less about the historical backdrop of the spot. Campbell's kin involved stones from the slope for the purpose of building. However, when the laborers uncovered the apparently undetectable slope, they tracked down the entry to the burial place. This astounding venturing stone estimates 10 feet by 4 feet and weighs north of 5 tons. Remember that these early craftsmen didn't have metal apparatuses to work with hard stone. He's a genuine antique lover, and the Grinch's new look generally captivated him. Lloyd is said to have been unmoved by the disclosure and portrayal of the weird sculptures he found, despite the fact that he composed a report that caused to notice another savant. Thomas Molyneux. As Sir Alex looked, Campbell let him know that there were two arrangements of these sculptures. Individuals are as yet ready to be overlooked. This is an early sign that the new landfill is as yet a graveyard, and throughout the long term closely involved individuals have come to the site. This normal subject among verifiable scientists is viewed as an affront to the Irish. A significant number of these creators composed hundreds of years prior or disproved the possibility that the Stone Age individuals in Ireland might have fabricated anything of this intricacy. Relics say that it was worked by the Vikings in the late early medieval times, or considerably prior by the antiquated Egyptians. Perhaps of Ireland's most popular paleontologist, teacher Michael Kelly of Plug College, started working there in 1962. His mediation in the new grit was too soon for the site's exactness. As a matter of fact, 
Despite the fact that Kelly halted the downfall of current grit and further developed it, somehow or another he was past the point of no return. When he began working in the Boyne Valley, a great deal of significant proof had been lost or spilled. Regardless of this, the minister continued in his main goal, and for quite a long time starting in 1962, he got back to the site each mid-year for a very long time of uncovering and redesign, and was paid his work with astounding disclosures. Kelly and his group found this when they were digging through the many grasses and weeds covering the highest point of the slope. First and foremost, gracious Kellyanne, different specialists couldn't make sense of the significance of the strange opening at the highest point of the heap. In any case, the archaeologists recollected the neighborhood custom that the sun generally gleams on the burial chamber during summer and midsummer. However, the area of the container on rooftop that the late spring sun can't enter. Kelly, on the other hand, suddenly considered how the piles appeared in the sun. What about the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year, if midsummer isn't the longest day of the year? Kelly then chose to pick the period of December 1967 to test his hypothesis. He headed to New Grit before sunrise, the site note.com said in his portrayal of that colder time of year solstice. At the point when I entered the graveyard, I realized I could see the dawn in light of the fact that the sky was clear toward the beginning of the day. As the morning sun came up the slopes of the Boyne Valley sparkled. Through the openings in the ceiling, bright sunlight reaches the center of the main tomb. Light beginnings from a flimsy pencil, the light sparkles in a six-inch band. Bo Kelly said there was such an excess of light gleaming off the floor that he could stroll through it without stumbling over a stone. It was so splendid I could see the roof 20 feet above me. The mystery is that the rooftop openings are intended to catch the sun's beams throughout the colder time of year solstice. Prior to beginning work on Newgrange, the two were anxious to grasp the European setting of these secretive burial places and other massive designs. In point of fact, Europe is home to structures of a similar nature. As per the New York Times, there are around 35,000 gigantic designs across Europe. They can be found wherever from Scandinavia to the Atlantic shorelines of France and Spain, and along the Mediterranean coast. A fascinating inquiry for archaeologists is the manner by which the innovation and abilities that made these delightful images spread to Europe quite a while back. However, a second theory suggests that the stones were first produced in the Near East. From that point, these traditions and customs spread toward the west to the Mediterranean coast and Europe, likely with the assistance of master gatherings. In any case, new proof found in 2019 recommended that the tombs were first found in France, with Bettina Schultz Paulsen, a paleologist at the College of Gothenburg in Sweden, enduring 10 years examining 2000. 410 rock radiocarbon dating results. His examination shows that the most established realized gigantic. Burial chamber is 6,500 years of age and is situated in western France. Apparently, these stones didn't approach east. This prompts another hypothesis that tombs started in France and spread along the Mediterranean coast and the Pacific Sea as well as across the sea to Scandinavia, England, and Ireland. The information expected to build the new Grinch's burial place in this manner seems to have spread to Ireland from its beginnings in Old France. Dr. Law, one of the scientists involved in the study, was described in the Irish Times. A group of researchers from Trinity College Dublin carried out the analysis, and when they published the results in June 2020 in the environment, they discovered unexpected results. Laura Cassidy, I've never seen anything like this, that we all have two copies of our genome from our mother and one from our father. He explained, I've never seen anything like this. As such, the man and lady brought into the world of this child, senior, sister, parent, or kid. Cassidy let the Irish Times know that the main acknowledgement ensured by orientation was among the privileged, especially the illustrious family. So these leftover individuals were important for a gathering of pioneers, maybe so high up that these pioneers were viewed as divine beings. The memorial service parade gave the association a feeling of pride 
and showed that the illustrious family was the main one to run the show. However, noble inbreeding was not a singular pattern. The heads of the Inca domain are said to have been associated with this interaction, and there is proof that Pharaoh Tutankhamun existed in view of family ties between his folks and kin. In any case, what provoked these antiquated rulers to begin wedding family members was quite possibly of mankind's generally strong untouchable. Cassidy believes it's not only the respectability. In any case, elites additionally disrupt numerous norms to separate themselves from the rest. By disrupting these norms, you become like God thanks for watching Dump Forget Like, Subscribe and Share.